Reggie. But I haven't got time to play with you now. That pussycat's going to get you for din-dins one of these days. Go on now. Go on. It's a sad day, Jonesy. Llewellyn Manor will never be the same now his lordship is dead and buried. No, no, no. Love has found a way on this our wedding day. Arnold, Arnold. And in a moment now we will take our vow. Arnold, darling Arnold. Just you wait and see. Arnold, Arnold. And let me count the ways through the nights and days. Arnold, you and me, darling Arnold. Warm, sweet Arnold. There's been a horrible mistake. They've mixed up the marrying with the burying. gathered together to pay our last respect. No, I... to join in holy wedlock this man. Uh, to join in holy wedlock this man and this woman in holy wedlock. Uh, for inasmuch as this man and this woman have consented to live as one, uh, sharing joys, sharing sorrows, sharing burdens, uh, if there be anyone present who can show just cause why these two should not be joined in holy matrimony, let him speak now, forever hold his peace. Uh, huh? 
Karen and Arnold, do you freely enter into wedded bliss and forsaking all others, promise to love, honor, and cherish for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health until death. <laughs> uh, uh, no. Uh, uh, Karen, do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. Uh, uh, Arnold, do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? I do. your man and wife. I... Heaven have mercy on me. not believe it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Well, then you'll not be putting his lordship in the crypt, is it? Devil throw smoke. I think the old fox is taking off on honeymoon. <laughs> oh, Lady Dwellin, I don't believe you've met my young legal associate, Evan Lyons. My condolences on the death of your husband, Lady Dwellin. Lord Dwellin's brother, Robert. I don't need any condolences. I need a stiff drink. Don't forget the meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. Mr. Whitehead, what did Arnold hope to prove by this bizarre ceremony with that oversexed airline hostess? It'll all be explained during the meeting at the manor house this evening. Excuse me, please. Oh, I'm Douglas Whitehead, Lord Dwellin's solicitor. There'll be a brief legal hearing at the manor house this evening, and I'd like all members of his lordship's staff to join us. You too, Constable. Oh, right, those will be a pleasure. Uh, that is, uh, <clears throat> I'd be a lot, sir. Oh, and uh, begging your pardon, sir, but uh, would you mind explaining what sort of peculiar religion his lordship subscribed to? I never saw no last rites like that before, I never. It wasn't a funeral, it was a wedding. That's it, that's it exactly. That's exactly how it looked to me. I said to myself, Henry Oak, I said, his lordship may be lying there as cold as a cod, I said, but he's taking himself a bride, he is. Then, quick as a flash, I answered myself, how can that be, Henry Oak? His lordship's already got himself a wife, Lady Jocelyn. No, 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 she's a widow now. Cousin Arnold is dead, you know. Oh, well, that explains everything, you see. With his lordship dead, Lady Jocelyn's a widow, and that leaves him free to, uh, to... <coughs> How do I love thee? Just you wait and see. Arnold, oh, Arnold. Until our final breath, even better after death. Arnold, darling Arnold, tender Arnold. Happy bride and groom, exotic honeymoon. Arnold, Arnold. They said it couldn't be, but just you wait and see, Arnold, you and me through eternity, oh, warm, sweet Arnold. Arnold. Karen, my dear little sweet new. I'm so happy for you and Arnie. 
many years of wedded bliss. I'm so glad you approve. Some sisters are overly protective. Oh, you're a perfect couple. I do hope you don't think ill of me for not attending the ceremony. Oh, oh of course not. I simply had to, had to stay and prepare for the guests, you know. <laughs> Besides, I'm afraid I would have embarrassed you terribly. I'm sure you wouldn't have. Oh, yes. I always weep so... <laughs> So hysterically at weddings. Oh, I'm sorry. Here I stand chattering away, and I'm sure that you two, you two lovebirds, will wish to be alone for a bit before the others start dropping in. Well, I'm sure these gentlemen would like to put Arnold down somewhere. Oh, of course. Uh, this way, in the drawing room, please. I have a nice, comfy place arranged for Arnold. There you are, Arnie. Your very favorite place. Arnie was born in this house, you know. Yes. So I understand. It's a... It's a homey place. With a lived-in feeling, don't you think? Hmm. Now, Arnie, let big sister fix your tie, tidy your hair before the guests arrive. Uh, Hester, don't you think we should keep it closed for now? No. Arnie loves to go to parties. <laughs> oh, lame pussy cat. Uh, he and Arnie have never been on the best of terms, I'm afraid. Uh, oh, here I am fussing over Arnie again. I must try to remember. You're his new bride. And you'll be wanting to do these, <laughs> these little things for him yourself now. The green button. that the reading of his will be held the evening after the uh, ceremony. This testament is a matter of written, signed, and duly notarized record. However, I shall not read it to you. The details of the various settlements will be presented by his lordship personally. <laughs> Thank you for attending the ceremony today and sharing with me my happiest hour. I know you're most anxious to learn how you fared in my will. And I assure you, I've gone to some pains to see that each of you receives exactly what he deserves. First, to Hester, my darling sister whom I cherish, who has tended and cared for me so lovingly. I leave a lifetime trust of 100 pounds a month and the incontestable right to reside in this house for as long as she shall live. Thank you, Arnie. You're quite welcome, Hester. Oh. To Cousin Douglas, a distant relative, nonetheless dear to us all, I entrust the settlement of my estate and certain other affairs attendant upon my late demise and current marriage. His retainer shall continue at its more than generous level. Next, to my younger brother, Robbie, who has apparently never wished for anything, obviously never worked for anything, consequently has nothing. I bequeath nothing. <laughs> Allergic to 
kitties. And to continue, to my bereaved and grieving widow, Jocelyn, I leave that which she has always treasured more than me, her title, Lady Dwellen, and the Rolls Royce to help her maintain the facade of nobility she cherishes. Please remain seated, my dear. Since you refused the one million pounds I offered for a divorce, money quite obviously means nothing to you. So, as a loving remembrance, a little gesture of affection, I give you one share in the Lady D Cosmetic Company. One share? What about the rest of the estate? As for the rest of the estate, which everyone knows is monumental, I leave it all to my lovely, adorable bride, Karen. Sole ownership of Dwellen Chemicals and all subsidiary companies, stocks, bonds, and an enormous hoard of cash, which is safely deposited in a vault, the location of which I shall reveal in the near future. Dear, sweet Karen, even though frustrated by the knowledge that my heartless wife would never grant a divorce, and knowing that for the past two years I suffered a terminal illness which might bring the end at any moment, you remain my warm and tender lover. Just as I know you will abide lovingly by the terms of this will and our premarital agreement to keep me with you always, just as you see me now. For as long as you shall live. Most generous of his lordship to remember all of us in the will too, ma'am. One in a million he was. One in a million. Got yourself a fine gentleman there, Mum. And I wish you many happy years together. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh. Oh. Lovely day for this sort of a wedding. <laughs> Cheerio, Mum. Thank you. Oh, you're not leaving also, Mr. Whitehead? Yes, I'm sorry, my dear. Evan and I would like to stay and drink a toast to you and the groom, but we must get back to Liverpool. Oh. As long as I'm down this way, I thought I might drive over and take care of that Ferguson matter. Excellent idea. That's combining business with uh, business, sir. See you in Liverpool. I'll see the estate is settled as soon as possible, my dear. Oh, thank you. And if you have any questions concerning the will, don't hesitate to ring me up. After all, Arnie and I are cousins. Or were. Ah. <laughs> oh, there is one other little thing. About the money Arnold mentioned. In some vault? I'm afraid I haven't the foggiest notion. Oh. Well, it's really not important. I was just curious. I'm sure you'll be informed of its whereabouts soon enough. Arnold always provided for every contingency, and this time he seems to have outdone himself. Dighton, take this to the car, please. Jocelyn, I hope you and your bridegroom, my dead husband, will be very happy together in this medieval mausoleum. I can understand your bitterness. If only you'd given Arnold more love and affection. You gave him enough affection for both of us. All he wanted was... I love. know what he wanted. What is your going rate? <gasps> Lady Dwellen, you are mistaken. Arnold and I never, never discussed money. What did he do? Just leave it on the mantel each night? Ours was a deep and honest love. In fact, I love Arnold so much, I refuse to let even death separate us. Rubbish. You won't get away with it, you know. 
It's quite illegal to marry a corpse. Well, Mr. Whitehead feels that he can prove our marriage valid. <laughs> he intends to establish a precedent using the analogy of women who marry soldiers at the front by proxy. Men who might already have died in battle before the wedding ceremony was performed. The corpse will award me the entire estate. I am the rightful heir, Arnold's one and only wife and widow. Happy honeymoon, you bitch. Congratulate the bride, yes. Now that old Arnie's dead, we don't have to hide anymore. Mm. <laughs> Come on. Sure. But not in front of Arnie. Huh? Why? Well, I get the creepy feeling he's watching us. Oh, come on. Old Arnie can't see a thing. See? <laughs> dead as a sausage. Oh, but he looks so alive. <laughs> I must say, he never looked better. And those eyes, that smile, they make my flesh creep. <laughs> well, you must admit, that is a fancy piece of marinating. Can you imagine devising a method to have the joints of your corpse articulated so you could be moved into any position you like, just like a bloody puppet? I know. Let's dress him up in his shorts and stand him out on the croquet court. Robbie, that's sacrilegious. But who's getting squeamish? <laughs> you married him. You know why I married him. Oh, I can't stand even being near him. I have to stay here to inherit the estate. We are going to hire the best solicitor in England and break that ridiculous agreement. I am the one you are going to spend the rest of your life with. Uh, uh, Karen, dear. Oh, the postman brought these, and this one is for you. <laughs> oh, are you three having fun? <laughs> and this must be a wedding gift. Hmm. It's another tape. Does that disturb you? I don't want to hear that voice again. That voice just may tell you where all that lovely money is hidden. Little Robbie, you disgraceful blot on the dweller escutcheon. You've always coveted everything I owned, and now you hope to take my lovely bride away from me. He knows about us. Oh, yes. I know how you feel about dear Karen. What are we going to do? Karen! He's always been so damn you jealous! You must be rational. But he made this tape before he died. If he really is dead, it was timed so perfectly. How could he know you would be here when it arrived? Coincidence? No, 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 of course not. Arnie knew me so well, he could anticipate my every move. Then who sent the tape? That is the interesting question. All right, Arnie. Who is it? Who is trying to drive us bonkers? Hmm? Did you make an agreement with Cousin Douglas? I mean, he'd do anything for money. Or was it doddering old Hester? She always did anything you wanted. Or was it that Hindu spook that you picked up in India all those years ago when he lost his arm trying to save your miserable life? Did he worshipped. We are forgetting someone. Who? The poor, grieving widow. Jocelyn. Well, darling, what do you think? 
I think the entire estate will end up precisely where it belongs. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if I couldn't have with dreary old Whitehead, I'd pack up my Blackstone. How will you do it? Well, after I take care of the Ferguson man, I'll tell you, my sweet. How long will it be? I'll meet you at the Shield and Plume before midnight. Ellen! Ellen! <laughs> Give us a kiss, then. Eh? Yeah, lovely. <laughs> Listen, uh, I was at a wedding today, and it uh, it reminded me, uh, when is you and me going to nip down the island? All in good time, Henry. Oh, come on now, Flo. Been betrothed for a year, we have. All this waiting, it, uh, it's very hard on a man, you know. Why ain't you out on your beat? It's raining out, Governor. You never knew when to come in out of the rain before. Well, uh, what with the uh, storm and everything, I, uh, I thought you might fancy a ride home in my handlebars. Oh, that's sweet of you, Henry. And then, uh, perhaps we could, uh, pop up to your flat and, uh, watch the television with your mother. Ah, listen to him, a ruddy sex fiend. Yes? Yes, Mum? I'm going to retire now. I don't wish to be disturbed by anyone. No, Mum. I'll see to it. I never knew her ladyship was staying here. Lends a bit of class to the place, eh, Governor? Quit babbling, boy. I'm trying to figure out my next move. What an idiotic man you were, Lord Arnold Dweller. And that bizarre and ridiculous marriage. You simply couldn't bear to think of losing your sweet young mistress, could you? Well, I have a surprise for you, too. My years with you weren't all as dreary and barren and loveless as you imagined. I also had a lover. Someone you never even knew. He'll be here shortly to keep me company and to talk about breaking your ludicrous will. You can simply sit there and watch and do nothing. Because you're dead, Arnold. And I'm your widow, not your ex-wife. Despite that farce of a wedding you staged today, just made his move.
What? I never heard nothing. Upstairs. Excuse me, I'd investigate. In your last respects to her ladyship. This was a terrible shock to all of us. Oh, up or down, don't know. Happens to us all sooner or later, you know. And it all ends right here. But that's not a very comforting thought, Constable. Uh, well, Mum, uh, at least you're the sole surviving widow of Lord Arnold now. She's not a widow, Constable. She's a new bride. Oh, I'm sorry, Mum. Always forgetting I am. There's a strange one, it is us. Have you completed your investigation of the tragedy? Oh, it, uh, it's all in my report, Mum. <clears throat> her ladyship was uh, putting a bit of goo on her face just before bedtime when this, uh, this dreadful thing happened all of a sudden, like. Bits and pieces of her face fell off. Oh. <sighs> Peeled like a ruddy onion, she was, yes. If you don't mind my saying so, that goo was a real wrinkle remover indeed. <laughs> Oh, Karen, poor dear. Jonesy, I've been wondering. Yes, Constable Luke. Did they make it a cemetery down here because it's always foggy? Or is it always foggy down here because they made it a cemetery? I give up. What do you mean you give up? I don't know. What's the answer? I don't know. I'm asking you. I just told you I don't know. Well, there's no need to be petulant, is there? Oh, I don't know. Everybody's so sensitive. Kill that bloody raven one of these days. <laughs> Robert, it's Karen. You've got to come out right away. No, no, you must come out. Now. It's about Jocelyn's death. I know who did it. Who did it? Arnold. He put something terrible in her face cream. Karen, are you going around the bend? He did, Robbie. <laughs> the cold cream is what killed her. Constable Hook told me. Karen. Do you actually believe that old De Arnie was dead for a week, came back, and then sneaked in and put acid in old Jocelyn's coat? Well, if he didn't come back, then he planned it somehow. Well, why be so upset about it, damn it? If old Arnie did do it, then I say, bless his rotten soul. Why? What? Because there will be nobody left to contest the will. The money will be all yours. You simply must look at these things properly. What do you mean by sneaking in here like that? Don't you ever announce yourself? Divey? When did this come? The postman has already been here today. Was it delivered by messenger? Damned Hindus. 
zombie. He is a perfect houseboy for a corpse. There's another message from Arnold. I'm sure of it. Aaron. Well, now we know it's not Jocelyn who's sending them. No, I can't stand to hear that voice anymore. Robbie, I don't care about the cash. The estate is enough. We are not going to leave a bank full of money lying around for somebody else to find. Besides, the settlement of the estate could be hung up in a court for months, oh, for years. My dear Karen, by now you will have heard how selfish, cold-hearted, unrelenting Jocelyn met her well-deserved end. Messy, but most effective. He did it. Maybe we'll be next. Shh. Now, of course, your first thought will be, am I next? Dear, dear Karen, can't you understand that all I wish is to be with you always? Can't you find it in your heart to live up to our agreement? If not, I fear your weakness will destroy you, my darling. And loathsome little Robbie as well. Now, is he not? I don't have to listen to you anymore. He'll get us, Robbie. Somehow, some way. I know he will. I can't stand it anymore. Karen! Now be quiet! Let me think. Karen, it is apparent that old Arnie made a very deep psychological study of us. Her face! Shh. Now, don't worry. We can box him. How? He has a fixed plot. He can't change it now. But we can. Maybe you're right. Of course I'm right. Now, you and I are going to make our little plan. All right. But not here. That's the first thing we've got to change. I feel Arnold is watching and listening to every word. Well, how about my flat in the village? Mm. We have a cozy fire. Mm -hmm. Children! This is my night for the weekly quilting party at the church. I do hope you can manage supper alone, dear. And I said pussycat. Oh, well, it's quite all right, Hester, because Robbie and I are driving into the village for supper. Oh, how nice! Getting to know all the family. I'm sure Arnie would approve your going out to once in a while. We can drop you on the way, sis. No, thank you, Robbie. That's sweet. But I enjoy the walk across the moors. The heather smells so delicious just after sundown. Ta-da. Oh. Dibey. Dibey. Have Josie bring the car around front. Please. you stop for champagne? I really feel like celebrating now that I'm out of that awful house. Who needs champagne? Ah. <laughs> 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 we would be much more comfortable in the bedroom. Idiot. 
running out like that. That's just what Arnie wanted. Robbie, how did he get there? Somebody brought him, and whoever it was is moving him back to the manor house right now. If we hurry, we can catch them. Robbie, how? How could he... My, you're home early. You should have been with me. Oh, it was so delightful at the quilting party. And isn't Arnie a dear, generous soul to let us all go out and enjoy ourselves? La, 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 la. Hester, hmm? uh, did you notice anyone hanging around outside when you came home? No. Only Jonesy. He was locking up the garden tool house for the night. All right. I'll go and make some tea. Oh, now that is a wonderful idea. <laughs> I'm leaving. What are you saying? I'm not going to hang around. That son of a bitch never meant to go through with our agreement. It was all just a plot to keep me around after he died so that he could kill me. Karen! Now, this is nonsense. You have to stick around until the court settles on the estate, or at least until Arnie lets you know where that cash is hidden. I don't believe he intends to tell me. Wait a minute. No, it could be hidden in this house. Yes, might be in this very room. But where the hell do you... You don't suppose that he could have hidden it in the most obvious place of all, I mean, where he could keep his hands on it. Do you mind uh, if I take a look, Arnie, old chap? Hmm? I don't believe him. What is it? He walked across the moor. Don't you start that. Whoever moved him just dragged his feet a little. Well, obviously the money is not in the coffin. But I know it's in this house here somewhere. And if he doesn't tell us about it pretty soon, I tell you, I, I'm going to tear this damn place apart. Well, I'm not spending another minute here. All right. All right. You can go to my flat. No, I'm not going there again Good either. Good God, girl, all right then. I'll take you to an inn. What inn? What inn? Some inn, an inn. I mean, that should calm your supernatural fears. How the hell can he know where you're going if you don't know? I'll change my clothes and pack a bag. You know, I need something too. Yeah, I think I'll borrow one of your suits, Arnie. I mean, you're not going out again tonight, are you, old chap? Sarah. You feeling better? I will when we're out of here. Esther. Oh, Robbie, look! Uh, this parcel arrived by messenger tonight while we were out. Daddy accepted it. Oh, thank heavens it's too big to be another tape. It's for Arnie from London. It may be a wedding gift. <laughs> well, let's see. Oh. Well, look at that. That's very elegant. <laughs> Old Arnie must have ordered a new suit. At least I won't have to wear hand-me-downs. Oh, Robbie, you always were one to sample Arnie's goodies. Maybe that is because Arnie always had so many more goodies than I did. Come along, let's go, thing. Time to go. I think I'm going to change. I'm not dressed yet. Oh, no. Let me in. <laughs> Robbie. Not now. Be patient. I'll be right down.
You enjoyed seeing me penniless in the sound while you built up your own miserable fortune, didn't you? And you spit on me in your will. You bastard. I'm going to get everything that you hoarded in your whole miserable life. And by the simple and delightful device of stealing He, um, never was really yours, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Not even when you were alive. What's the matter, Arnie? Nothing to say. Hmm? No tape for that, huh? <laughs> Things are... Things aren't turning out the way you... Devil's on time, scraping up enough of my rubber to fill this hole in proper. Oh, uh, well, rest in peace, as the saying goes. I'm resting pieces, too, I suppose. Eh? Poor Lady Dwellin. Dreadful shock, you know. Master Robert Putney's buttons right in her face that way? Yes, his buttons is all that was left of him, poor chap. No more flow. Chancy, fancy this. Well, I just got back from picking up the post. Oh, I thought perhaps I might indulge myself at our pint, please, up. Yes, these gloomy days, you could do with a bit of cheer. Here you go, love. Well, up the RAF. Right up. Getting back to Dwelling Manor. May have another hole to dig. Buy all. <clears throat> I'll have one left. Oh, Jonesy forgot his package. I'll have to run after. Oh, wait a minute, so love. Let me see that. There you are, you see. It's addressed to Lady Dwellin. I'll take it to her when I go to finish my report. Dear lady's been in a state of shock the last few days. Hasn't said a word to a soul since Master Robert exploded. No. Well, there you are. Show my board it up. Governor, your son's a saint. That's what he is. There's a suspicion in my mind that he's neither a saint nor my son. Nice. Your room, love. Oh, uh, most gracious of you to see me, Mum. Yes, indeed, yes. <laughs> There's only uh, one or two bits about this puzzling case I'd like to clear up. Of course, Constable. 
Uh, <laughs> begging your indulgence, your lordship, I'll only be a moment. Yes. Now, uh, as I stated in my report, ma'am, I found the assorted bits and pieces here in the drawing room. Yes. <clears throat> there, uh, there was this head on a mantelpiece. All blue it was, and blown up like a ruddy circus balloon. Yes. But I made out Master Robert right enough. Yes, yes, I understand. Vividly. Oh, it's cleaned up very nicely, huh? Eh? Yes. And uh, nestling over here in a corner was this uh, pair of shoes. And uh, scattered about, higgledy piggledy, was wee bits and pieces of what goes between the head and the shoes. Sort of like a jigsaw puzzle, you might say. <laughs> Please get to your question. All right, all right, you are. I'm sorry, ma'am. <clears throat> now, all I want to clear up my report is this. Was all them various components Master Robert? Or might they have been Master Robert and some other person? And one of them... <coughs> and the chit. There was only Robert. Thank you, ma'am. That saves a lot of further fuss and poking about. <laughs> Odd sort of accident, really? Very odd, yes. Combination of uh, too much heat and too much brandy, I suppose. Yes, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Good day, Your Lordship. I must say, His Lordship's old enough remarkable. Oh, remarkable. All he takes, I suppose, is a bit of dust enough now and then. Well, we just sing three Oli Olies and push off home. <coughs> Ew, I almost forgot. Uh, this is for you. Uh, Jones, we left it at the pub a bit ago. <laughs> well, good day, Mum. Good day. Douglas Whitehead, please. I'll take it in here, Miss Matthews. Whitehead here. Oh, yes, Lady Dwelling. I was going to ring you up. I beg your pardon? Of course, I'll drive down directly after work. Where? Seems rather strange, but if that's what you want. It is some distance from Liverpool, and I may arrive rather late tonight. Well, don't worry, I'll be there. Rest assured. Goodbye, my dear. Oh, Mr. Whitehead, I'm so glad you drove down. I am so upset. 
upset and disturbed. My dear, if you're so upset, why meet in a morbid place like this? I can't stand that house. At least I know everyone here is dead. I'm not so sure about Arnold. Your husband? What are you saying? He's... <coughs> He's going to murder me. Arnold, murder you? Preposterous. He's already murdered Jocelyn and Robbie. I will be next. I know I will. My dear, rarely does a dead man commit murder. If he really is dead. What on earth are you trying to tell me? No one was with Arnold when he died. He could have paid the doctor to falsify the death certificate and then substituted that, that thing in the casket. But why would he do a thing like that? Who knows what went on in that twisted mind of his, or what's going on now. Oh, Douglas, I'm so frightened. Please help me, please. Well, of course, yes, of course I will, my dear. If I have to go on living with that thing, I'll go mad. There must be some way to free me from that sadistic agreement I've signed. Hmm? require a good deal of clever legal manipulation. Oh, I'll pay a generous fee. And if you're successful, 10% of my share in the estate. I rather think 50% would be more fitting, my dear, plus fringe benefits. 50%? Plus fringe benefits. I won't pay it. Well, I rather think that completes our business. Good night, Lady Dwellin. Do remember me to Arnold, please. Douglas? Fifty percent. Plus, fringe benefits. Ah, <laughs> you drive a hard bargain, Douglas. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. <laughs> and may I say, it's much more fascinating being of service to the distaff side of the family. Mm. Shall we have a drink and seal the bargain? Yes, yes. Karen, Karen, Karen. Why must you always rush to another man? I fear, old chap. You refuse to heed my warnings. Yet you saw what happened to Robbie. And you know what happened to Jocelyn. How? How could he possibly know I was with you? It's incredible. Convinced the corpse was talking. Karen? Now do you believe those other deaths were not accidental? You're absolutely right. Some real, very live person is operating this whole bizarre scheme. What are we going to do? You go upstairs. Try to get some sleep. Sleep? Just leave it to me. I have a scheme, too. But... Now, please run along. When that jolly little friend of yours, whoever it is, comes sneaking in tonight to remove or change that tape, he's going to get it hot off the goose.
keeping that bloody monster. I was never overly fond of you, Douglas. For one thing, you're an ungrateful wretch. If I hadn't kept you on lavish retainer all these years, you'd scarcely have any practice at all. That's a damn lie. Yet, like all the other greedy members of this family, you feel cheated. Of course. I dedicated my life to serving you, and you threw me crumbs. By the way, did you enjoy my excellent and very expensive vintage cognac, old chap? You have a habit of helping yourself to it. I was certain you would again. Oh, good Lord! Oh, don't be alarmed, dear boy. The cognac isn't lethal. It will merely help you enjoy a very long, very deep and restful sleep. Waste of precious space just to bury one foot, Mom. Yes, pitifully small remains. Are you certain that it was Cousin Douglas? Oh, oh yes, yes. All in my report, Mom. <coughs> the, uh, the foot wasn't a great deal of help. Man's foot it was, size 10, double A, well kept, and the, uh, the sock was in rather nice taste, but the, the leg suspender was a little garish for my liking. No identifying marks or wounds, unless, of course, he was to, to count where the ankle was cut off. No, no, real puzzler it was. And then I put my investigative skills to work. Traced a boot to a firm in London. They made this precise foot gear up special for Solicitor White, yeah. Seems he had some sort of inverted instep, you know. Very clever, Constable. <coughs> How do you suppose that dear Douglas met with such an unfortunate accident? Plain and simple, ma'am. <laughs> yes, it's all in my report. You see, the trail of blood went from the boot out into the street. Hit and run, it was. Dead of night, dark street, black suit, oh. Never knew what hit him. No, 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 no. Poor chap. 
I should think they'd be picking up bits and pieces of him between here and Liverpool for some time, I should wonder. Mm. Oh, uh, if the cat drags in any new bits and pieces, uh, Jonesy can dump them in the pits as they pop up. <laughs> uh, crikey, many's the time I've heard the expression of having one foot in the grave, but... Uh, <laughs> but what? But what? It's an expression. One foot in... Oh, never mind. Three horrible deaths, one after the other, and all in the same family. Don't that lead you to suspect a bit of foul play, Henry? No, 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 Flo. Nasty accidents they were. A rash of accidents. Rather localized, you might say. But how can you be sure? Oh, <clears throat> when you're a skilled criminologist like myself, it's as plain as a nose on your pretty little chest. Face. <coughs> oh, boys, give us a hand over here, will you? All right, Governor, here we are. All together now. One, two, three. Up for Daisy. That's it. There you go. Uh, oh, wait a bit, wait a bit. Let's find him something with a bit less altitude. Over here, boys. There it is. There it is. Thank you very much, boys. You know, Governor, I think you've had a bit more than you can handle. Well, perhaps for the good of me heart, I'll save her off a bit. Oh, I best be getting on my rounds, but... Uh, I'll, uh, I'll pop back after closing to uh, see you all, my lovely. Don't worry, Flo, darling. Nothing damaged. Nothing damaged. Uh... Oh, Henry! I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you that I've got other plans for this evening. Oh. Put me off again, are you? Listen, a man can take putting off just so often. And I'm asking you straight out, are you and me engaged or not? Oh, of course, Henry. Well, that's more like it then. <laughs> Have a lovely evening and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> uh, no start, Governor. <laughs> you have to go the, the wrong way, you see the... Uh, the uh, Lady Duella. Yes. But don't you remember me? Evan Limes, Mr. Whitehead's associate. Mr. Whitehead is dead. Yes, of course. I know. That's why I'm here. Arnold killed him. You're... Arnold, you know? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I was at the wedding. Um, you, um... You say he killed Douglas Whitehead? And Robert. Really? And Jocelyn. Well, he is a bad one. Quite active for a man uh, in his condition. He was going to kill me, too. Well, then why didn't you leave? Get out of this abattoir. He would find me anywhere. Really, Lady Dwellin, I don't think this man is going to murder you? No, not now. Because I'm doing exactly what he wants. Just sitting here. Being with him. For as long as you shall live. Oh. Uh, so uh, I understand. 
understand the terms, but... Uh, it always has amazed me, this... Uh, But I mean, uh, you're so young, so attractive. Now, you can't go on with a macabre arrangement like this. But I have to. It's the only way I can stay alive. Well, I wouldn't call this staying alive. Now, don't you worry. Now that I'm taking over your affairs, hmm, we'll get you out of this in a hurry. You mustn't talk like that. Can't you see? Arnold is lying right here, watching and listening to every word. Now you see him? Now you don't. Now, uh, about your arrangement with Mr. Whitehead. Oh. Douglas was going to get me out of my agreement and help me dispose of Arnold for 50% of the estate plus fringe benefits. Well, you're very happy to make the same arrangement. Oh, no, you can't. Uh, don't you understand? He'll kill you, too. No, no, he doesn't know about me, remember? Besides, Ken. Dealing with musty old Whitehead now. Oh, that predictable fop, Robbie. Hmm. Maybe you can do something. Mm -hmm. I think our first objective should be all that cash your husband is supposed to have hidden somewhere. Now, others are no doubt looking for it already. Where did Arnold spend most of his time? He had a private laboratory in the cellar. I've never seen it. Well, that sounds like an excellent place to start. Yeah. When we get around to it. I see the light.
across the boat. Bloody raven. Here now, constable. You stop that. Reggie, there don't mean no harm. They say when a raven sits on a tombstone, another death is about to happen. Who says? They say. Oh, they. It's a very old saying. If there's one thing we don't need, it's a ruddy raven out and out, Jonesy. Well, there has been a lot of dying around here lately, and that's a fact. Yes. Odd thing is, they all die in bits and pieces. Not a old healthy cadaver in the last three. Now, with poor old Dibey lying there, seem queer not to have him around to talk to no more. That's odd. I never heard him say a ruddy word. No, he never did. But he could listen a blue streak. Uh, have you solved the mystery of how he cut to lose his head all of a sudden, like, huh? No, mystery? No. You see, there was nothing in that wall cupboard where his head was found, except his head. So we can rule out that he was up to a bit of light finger work. No, 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 no. My deduction is he was doing a bit of dusting around, you know, uh, cleaning up like a good chap. Then he, he slips and accidentally presses a button that closes the door. Well, he was always a bit awkward, handicapped with that old card and all. No, 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 no. Killed in a line of duty, is my report. Hard work done him in. Nobody saw me. I thought it was only decent to come scrub your back before I went out this evening. Oh! <laughs> no, 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 no. Ah, uh, this way's better. Evan, I do feel close to you. Well, we're running out of space in the family plot, ma'am. We'll have to plant them piggyback if this goes on. Do you really think that dear Karen and poor Mr. Lyons were killed accidentally, uh, Constable Hook? It's all in my report, ma'am. Yes, I found them in a young solicitor's car at the foot of that steep cliff down by the ocean. Mr. Turnin and plunged over is my guess, yes. Terrible. Terrible. Car caught fire, burned a poor soul. <sighs> Flat as griddle cakes they was. Yes, and cooked to a turn, if you don't mind my saying so. I suppose we must all carry on. Yes, Mum, it's uh, been a sad day for all of us. Only yesterday I, I lost my father and my fiance. Oh, they died? Eloped. <clears throat> Well done, my dear devoted Hester. The playing of this tape means that you carried out your final assignment.
with all the devotion you displayed in a lifetime of caring for me. And, as I planned so brilliantly, we can now be together, you and me, forever. Jocelyn would never have agreed to it. Karen did agree, but I knew she was as faithless as Jocelyn, and now each is disposed of. I got two this last time, one you never even counted on. I think I may be forgiven a touch of immodesty if I say my scheme was simply masterful. My psychological skill, my ability to outwit and outguess, easily prevailed over all those greedy little people. Oh, shut up, Arnie! Your skill, your wit, your genius. Without me, your plot would be nothing but yards of ridiculous tape. The arrival of the tapes and the suit. And I told Jonesy how to get Karen and the solicitor into the car. And Cousin Douglas into the trash box. And all the other details. Oh, foolish army. Did you really imagine that I'd keep you around forever? Like some monstrous stuffed animal? I only used you, Arnie. Just as you used me. Nighty night, Arnie. I'm going to tuck you in nice and warm. Isn't that nice, Jonesy? You've got it all finished. You've been a big help to me, and I do appreciate it. Well, would you mind showing your appreciation with a bit of cold cash, Mom, like you promised? After all, I put in a lot of extra hours. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> as soon as we dispose of Arnie. Oh, well, well I don't see the box, Mom. <laughs> Arnie is right here. I had him cremated. <laughs> My goodness. His lordship cooked right down to nothing, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, Jonesy, there's a nasty big rock down there. Would you move it, please? We want it all comfy, cozy. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, I'm all comfy, cozy for Lord Arnold, eh? <laughs> the grave is not for Arnie. Uh, no! away in the crypt, everyone will be in his proper place. That nice pussy cat. Now, you and I can peacefully enjoy what all the others were fighting for. I have already found Pussycat is to find that easy to spend cash. Rome is waiting. <sighs> Say nighty night to Uncle Army, Pussycat. <sighs> I promise you, Arnie. 
honey. I'll find the vault where you hid it. Of course. The vault. Of devoted Hester. I was so sure you were the one person who loved me for myself alone, with no thought of monetary reward. Yes, honey, you know how close we've always been. But, dear sister, just in the terrible event you should prove me wrong, I devised this final moment of reckoning. No, no, honey! I couldn't be here unless you had disposed of me against my wishes. And you wouldn't be here unless you had placed me here. I'll leave the money right here, Arnie. I'll the money. There's really no need for tears or recriminations. We both have what we most want. Arnie, you're teasing me, Arnie. You have that hoard of money at your fingertips, and I have you with me here. For all eternity. 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 Well, Pussycat, it appears there's nobody home up at the manor. Lady Esther must have gone off on that long trip she always dreamed of. Yes, yes. Well, after all she's been through, she deserves it. Couldn't be. But just you wait and see. 